much money and yeah, chasing your dreams. There is society, then there is reality. That's my dad. That's my dad. Welcome. I am BBT, and you can ask me anything. How y'all doing today? Happy Saturday. I won't be before you long. My daughter has a volleyball tournament that I got to get to. I got to wake my son up, make some breakfast, and get up out of here before I do. I wanted to get this show done. At least I'll talk a little bit about it. I think I'm going to do a couple parts to this because it was a long interview by Jason Whitlock, Fearless. Uh, Fearless. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube. If you can see this little image, uh, the actual show is two hours. So what I did was I went to his X profile, Twitter X profile, and I'm just going to react to a couple of the clips that he did there. So uh, definitely, if you want to check out the full interview, go there. But I wanted to give you my thoughts on what he's talking about with P. Diddy. So let me start with this. Let me play a little background music first. And remember, this is for fair use, fair use purposes only. I'm only reacting to what I hear and giving my opinion. So let me start with this. And the music industry sat around and made some decisions as shareholders that has affected us as stakeholders. We live in a polluted culture. It, 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 so those of you with memories, rap music was one, it was fun party music in the early 1980s. In the mid 1980s, it was kind of defined by being socially conscious and educational. I mean, KRS-One would put out songs that would be better than anything you were taught in school. Public Enemy would put out songs that would make you feel uh, confident and pride and whatever. And then the shareholder said, we need, we can use this music to promote the prison industrial complex. We can use this music to criminalize the culture and get more people in prison. And so the Jerry Hellers and the Easy es and, and the Suge Knights and the Harry O's and, and, and the David Kidders, they partnered up to execute this plan. And the influence of rap started to spread everywhere. And the next thing you know, the entire culture is changing. And this is, again, when I talk about the poison spreading everywhere, rap is a global phenomenon. This isn't just contained to the ghettos. And so when they go pick out a Tupac Shakur, an Ice Cube, an Ice T, uh, a, a Jay Z, or, or, you know, because they all got 50 cents, they all got the same stories. That bomb <laughs> gets me every time. But yes, I agree with everything he said. Rap started out one way, it was. It was happy. It was. Uh, it made you feel good. Uh, then it went to socially conscious. It was talking about key issues in our community, how we can get out, how we can get better. And yes, rap is a global rap. Hip hop is a global phenomenon. I don't care where I'm at in the world, and I've been to over forty countries. I mean, I can be in uh, Cannes, France, in a little coffee shop, and they're playing hip hop. Hip hop is a global phenomenon. And yes, at one point, it went from the happy music, it went from the empowerment empowerment music, it went from telling the stories of our community to it went to this dark place. And yes, uh, you know, when I was young, I didn't fully understand it. Obviously, you were limited with your options. So whatever was played on the radio or you saw on jukebox, you listened to and you just jammed to. And then when I got a little bit older, I understood that there was uh, some things happening on the back end and that kind of caused the transition to more darker, uh, more corrupt type of uh, music. So let me let him keep going to the next one and I will uh, share my re reaction to that. Wait, one thing I did want to say on the caption he wrote uh, once the shareholders, BlackRock and Vanguard figured out that they could 
use rap as influence they poison the music industry to push a prison culture so these are the people that own the record labels and they also own the prison systems if you don't know anything about black rock or vanguard look them up they are a powerful entity the people that run them they are powerful people uh if you are somewhat of a conspiracy theorist i don't even know if it's conspiracy theory at this point uh, but you'll hear all the time about these are the people that run the world. So anyway, let me go to the next clip. Let's see. Hold on one second. When, when I read these allegations about P. Diddy, and, and when I read like how sexually fluid he is and how comfortable he is, uh, sexually, allegedly, sexually abusing young people, children. Where does that come from? Well, that likely comes from a young boy having his father murdered when he's three years old, living in a very compromised situation and living in a community that is dominated by dysfunctional and destroyed families. That man is vulnerable. And if I had to speculate, the reason he's comfortable, according to these allegations, sexually abusing boys and girls, men and women, comfortable uh, killing or shooting people according to these allegations it's because of how he grew up and probably because of what happened to him and and trust me the people at the top the people that make decisions in the best interest of blackrock and vanguard and the other globalists who want to manipulate and destroy the global cult culture they know hey these are the people that fit the profile these are the people we can install in critical positions these are the industries we can support to reach our goals they're gonna come again yes uh so the caption is it's always go it always goes back to the home diddy is a product of a broken foundation his background makes him the perfect candidate to be used as a plant to compromise others like him so i'll just say this when I, I, i've always had my issues with diddy obviously i love the music back in the day with busy biggie and then when he, he put out his his own album obviously he loved the music it was hot but I always question like what does Diddy do what does Diddy do like how did he get to this level like is he you know this or that and I never could fully understand it and once again as I got older and I started to understand a little bit further I started to say to myself man this dude's a gatekeeper he 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 just no matter what trouble or what uh, circumstance he's in he always gets out and he always come out on top uh, I never forget when he did the making of the band and and I think that's when it really started to shine a little bit more light on me like something ain't right with this dude but anything anyway what i believe uh jason whitlock is doing is he is positioning diddy as because he came from this uh, broken home uh, because he has some ties to this and that he is the perfect candidate to prop up to the top and then once we drop prop up to the top he could do our bidding he can uh, bring in the people he can uh, whatever we need him to do, he'll do. And one thing about the black community, we, we're always looking for heroes. We're always looking for leaders. And if they look like us, we're going to give them a pass. And I truly believe that's what uh, Diddy has been. Um, I'm not getting specifically into the allegations of what uh, people are saying or what the lawsuits. I mean, all of that is alleged. But I've always had my feelings that how can, how is this dude untouchable how did this dude get to the top how is he make honestly how is he making all this money i still don't fully understand that but anyway uh let me play a couple more uh clips and then like i said i'm gonna get up out of here and i'm gonna come back and do a part two so let me go to this next thing hold on one second Sorry, yeah. Okay, let's take let's take rap music. Let's take okay. same people who own the labels own the prisons. This Ice Cube. So literally the same people. Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. So, so you know, it, it seems really kind of suspicious if you want to say that word that you know the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. 
But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making, it's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about um, being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't. Certain flavors are exposed on the record. You know, some records are made by committee. You, meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. So the, the narrative is really kind of, you know, structured and, 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 and really made into what the record company want the record to be. And what the, you know, a lot of artists are frustrated with this kind of music making. You know, a lot of people, you know, feel like they're being controlled by the label. This is how they do it. Telling you what songs to sing, what hooks to do, what songs, you know, you can do your song. That's fine. That's an album cut. But you want to, the single is what we all say is the single. So you have, you know, the record company pushing the narrative, you know, um, and, but, and, 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 you know, so this, this to me is in some way, uh, you know, some social engineering going on here to, to make sure those prisons stay full. N n none of this. It's, it's an open secret. Look <laughs> at that palm again. Yeah. That was Ice Cube talking, just talking about how, the people that own the label, labels own the prison. Now, when I come and do part two, I'm going to find this video I saw some time ago that talks about this meeting where, uh, I mean, allegedly they talk about when the transition happened, when a lot of record labels were talking about we're going to really push this gangster music really, really hard. And in turn, we're going to push people to do certain things. And it's ultimately going to help us fill up the prisons that we're building. Uh, I'm going to find that video and I'm going to play it and I'm going to recap that as far as well as uh, continue to recap what Whitlock is saying on the Diddy issue. Now, once again, I don't think that it's all about uh, Diddy in terms of he's not the only one, but they prop Diddy up allegedly, or in my opinion, uh, so high that I just really feel like he felt he, he was untouchable. He could do whatever he want. And now a lot of his secrets are coming out. And once again, I'm not saying if it's true or not, but when you hear them, and I'll talk about that in the next show, you're going to be like, what the, I mean, it's crazy that, I mean, it's gone on for so long. I mean, it's like you, you hear things like Diddy Party. So everybody has known about it for a very long time and no one has really done anything. I think it's kind of one of the things where that's just Diddy. And so at the end of the day, um, yeah, I, you know, what Whitlock is, is hitting on right now, I agree fully. Um, I remember I took, uh, well, currently I don't listen to the radio. I don't even listen to XM other than uh, uh, Smokey Robinson Station and listen to old school, old school uh, um, uh, soul mu soulful music. And so um, I don't really listen to the new music today, but I remember when I first took my time off from listening to, um, you know, what was coming on the radio and hip hop, I was surprised at all of the, the new stars, all the people that was getting all the airplay. I was like, wow, who is this dude? Who is this dude? What are they talking about? It went from being lyrical. It went from being from people like Nas and actually spreading messages and KRS-One and Public Enemy, um, you know, to just kids talking about depression, talking about, uh, lean talking about killing themselves. I mean, it, it it was crazy. And these were all of your new stars in the industry. I mean, to a point where some of the artists today and, and during that time are not even audible. You don't even know what they're saying. So it just makes you think, how did they rise up to that point? And it's because the labels are pushing this. I think they're pushing the destruction in our community. And the best way to do that Let's do music and sports. And at the end of the day, we're going to continue to watch and it's going to continue to evolve and, and do more destruction. So anyway, on the next show, I'm going to get more into some of the things that people are saying that Puff did, well, not Puff, did he did. And I'm also going to continue to talk a little bit about the correlation between the individuals that run the show and how they're profiting from it so wish my daughter luck i am going to um go check out her game get the boy up and we got to get going wish her luck this is her third tournament they won the first they didn't do well the second so hopefully they do well today so y'all take care 
and I'm out. Peace.